You are literally stacked on... I have to show you this. This pile of books is literally what you're stacked on right now. I really, I do have a tripod. Am I using it? Nope. I feel like you're gonna fall. You're so crooked. Hey book besties, welcome or welcome back to another video. I am here with some of my favorite thriller recommendations for my fellow thriller girlies out there and I'm super excited to share some of the books that have kept me on the edge of my seat. Some of my very favorite thrillers of all time. So if you're looking for a good book for this fall season or any time of year that you're just in the mood for a good thriller that will keep you invested from start to finish, here are some of my very favorite thrillers of all time. So I am a thriller girl. I really am. I started reading romance, then I got into thrillers, and now I'm just now starting to dabble into like fantasy. But thrillers, there's something about a good thriller. It is like my go-to palette cleanser when I am feeling like I'm on the verge of a slump or I'm needing something fast-paced to get me back into reading. Thrillers are great for like separating some of my longer reads. If I'm in the middle of a really long series, I will pick up a thriller in between to like kind of just be fast-paced and get me excited for reading. I feel like thrillers are most often the books that I will read cover to cover like in one sitting. I'll stay up late reading them. They're just page turners. They're good. I just love mysteries. I love thrillers. Specifically psychological thrillers I really like. I don't love gory thrillers as much but like the twisted mind f type thrillers love them. I love them so much. So if you are like me and you like the thrill, I have some of my very favorite thriller recommendations here and I'm going to be walking you through them and letting you know briefly what they're about, why I love them, and if I think they are the perfect book for you. Buckle up, bust out your TBR, and we're gonna get started walking through some of my favorite thrillers. So it would be wrong of me to not start with Alice Feeney. My very favorite Alice Feeney thriller is Rock, Paper, Scissors, and this is about Mr. and Mrs. Wright. Their names are Adam and Amelia, and they win a weekend away into this remote cottage in the snowy Scottish, I think they're like in a mountainside. Something really interesting about this book is that Adam has face blindness, so he actually cannot recognize faces. So someone could be standing right in front of him and he could like understand their voice or that type of thing, but he cannot recognize their face. Adam and Amelia have like this underlying tension that makes the whole book just kind of feel like something is off. They're not getting along. They both have secrets from each other and there's just kind of this eerie vibe underlying everything that they're doing, everything they're saying, just their relationship as a whole. And then on top of that, they're in this remote cabin away from civilization, away from connection to anybody else. These creepy, creepy things keep happening. They both have secrets from each other, but also there's like this third party that is kind of looming. Oh, it gives me chills. One thing I really, really loved about this book is we get alternating perspectives between Adam and Amelia, but then there's also a random third perspective from someone named Robin, and we don't know who the heck Robin is, but the chapters are written so eerily where it's like Robin is spying on them, has her eye on them, like she definitely is watching Adam and Amelia, but we don't know anything about Robin besides the fact that she's just kind of this eerie, looming being. By far my favorite Alice Feeney book. I think I gave this five stars. I This is a thriller that I was like closing my blinds. Like I was literally looking over my shoulder as I was reading this. Like it actually creeped me out. Really, really great book. I've also read Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney, which is about a woman who is in a coma, but she can hear what's happening around her. So she's trying to piece together like the accident that led her into her coma. And like there's really weird things going on. She can't trust anybody around her. Um, I've also read His and Hers, which I actually didn't love that one. I don't even remember much of it. I just remember one of them was a cop and there was like weird relationship dynamics. Look up the summary because I don't even remember His and Hers. I didn't really enjoy that one. I also just read her brand new release, Good Bad Girl. I really liked this one as well. This is told from four different perspectives, I believe. Frankie, Patience, Edith, and Cleo, and you are getting four different perspectives, and at first they seem like they're telling four different stories, but then slowly they all start overlapping and piecing together. This is like, this one felt more like a mystery to me than a thriller, but total page turner. I read this in just over a day because I like couldn't put it down, and I thought it was really, really good. Not as good as Rock, Paper, Scissors, but one of my favorite Alice Feeney books for sure. While we're on the topic of thriller authors, I would be wrong to not mention Frieda McFadden. 
she is like the ultimate thriller author to me. Her and Alice Feeney are kind of my thriller queens. Frida has a lot of really great books and also a lot of mediocre books, a lot that kind of just fell short for me, but she has some of my all-time favorite books. So my favorites from her are The Inmate, Never Lie is probably my all-time favorite, The Housemaid series is really good, there's The Housemaid and The Housemaid Secret. I also enjoyed her newer release, The Coworker. Not as much as the other ones, but I did enjoy that one. Frida also wrote Can You Keep a Secret? That one was decent. Didn't love it, but that one was okay. Ward D um, was okay, kind of problematic in the way she speaks about mental health, mental illness, but the thriller aspects of it were okay. Um, what else did she write? One by One, I didn't like that one. I didn't think that was good. Really my top favorites are Never Lie, The Housemaid series, and The Inmate. I think those three are really, really good. Next up I have And Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Jewell, I'm not exactly sure how you say her last name. I always say Jewell, but this was pretty good. This is definitely a darker thriller. I rated this one three out of five stars, I think, only because I felt like it was predictable. Like the lead up was almost too good where I was like, yeah, I know exactly how this is going to pan out. And the plot twist could have wowed me. Like I was hoping the lead up wasn't the direct indicator of the plot twist, but it was. Do you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure that made no sense, but maybe it did. So this is about a little girl that goes missing. Her name's Ellie. And 10, 10 years later, Ellie's mom ends up meeting a man and they kind of hit it off and she meets this man's daughter and she looks identical to Ellie. So there are clues, there are twists, there are turns. It's kind of like a missing child mystery but also like the added element of her new boyfriend's daughter looks exactly like her missing daughter like that's really freaking creepy the ending of this was definitely dark definitely twisted it left me feeling a little bit ugh after but maybe that's a sign of a good thriller i think this was worth the read and i also have some other books by her that i haven't read yet the family upstairs i think is the one i own yeah it's called the family upstairs i haven't read that one yet so i can't say anything about it but i would recommend this one if you're looking for a darker thriller if you're not turned off by dark next i feel like i have to mention verity i'm really not going to talk much about it just because i feel like literally everybody and their mother has read verity this was one of my very first thrillers that i ever read so it really really wowed me in the moment Looking back, I probably wouldn't rate it as high as I did when I first read it just because I'm more well-versed in thrillers. But as a whole, this is one of my favorite Colleen books. And I think if you haven't read it, why not? Like, give it a shot. Then at least you can participate in the Verity conversations and you can understand the Verity memes. I freaking love Verity memes. They make me laugh so hard. Something about book memes in general, it just feels like you're speaking a secret language with fellow book lovers and it's the best thing in the entire world. But... Anyways, I digress. I'm not going to give a summary of Verity because if you haven't read it or haven't heard anything about it, like, I'm shocked and I won't bore you by giving an explanation of a book that you've probably already heard about. That's a big picture of Colleen Hoover. Hey girl. That's weird. Okay. Next I read The Couple Next Door and this thriller was not my favorite but I feel like I'm going to recommend it because I think it could be a good thriller for certain people. If you like more crime mysteries, like solving crimes, missing people, missing child, that type of thing, I think this could be really good. I was wanting more twisted psychological thriller vibes as I was reading this, so I think I kind of read wrong book at the wrong time. Right book, wrong time? I think I read the wrong book for what I was looking for at that time. But I think in the right setting with the right reader, this book could be really good. Um, wasn't one of my favorites, but could potentially be. This is about Anne and Marco Conti, and basically they go next door and they leave their newborn baby at home alone, which just kind of irritated me from the start. Like, what do you expect to happen if you're going to leave a newborn at home alone? Anyways, I'm not here to judge anybody's parenting style. You do you, but shocker, the baby goes missing and the story is just kind of unraveling. Who took the baby? Where the baby went? Is the baby alive? Is the baby okay? What happened? I felt like this was really redundant. I felt like we could have gotten to the ending a lot quicker. It felt a little bit predictable. Wasn't my favorite of all time, but like I said, if you're into more crime mysteries, could be a good book for you. Before I forget, I want to mention some of my favorite thrillers that I don't own physical copies of, and that is Local Woman Missing. So this is a thriller that actually really shocked me. This is another missing person thriller but I thought this one was a little bit better done because there was more of like that psychological twisted 
mind F type of aspect in this one. Um, this is about a local woman that goes missing. Shocker, I know. I honestly don't remember anybody's names, but I just remember really loving this book. This is a book I read, I think it was last summer, and I read it in one sitting in the summer because I just could not put it down. I thought it was really, really good. So definitely check that one out. It's also another really popular one. Another book I read almost immediately after Local Woman Missing, so I always like keep them connected in my mind. Do you guys do that? Like if you read books back to back, you like mentally have them paired together even though they're not technically paired together. Maybe that's just something I do, I don't know. But I also read Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier, I'm pretty sure. And that is another good book. That one deals with an additional infidelity aspect. There's a murder, it's it's twisted, there's plot twists. You trust literally nobody in that book. And I thought it was really good. It kept me super invested because I wanted to trust somebody and just when I started to trust somebody they like flipped on me and I was like "Ooh, that was suspicious now I don't trust you I was just like super suspicious of every character in this book and I think that that was obviously the point and it was really well done one of my all-time favorite thrillers is The Woman in the Window by AJ Finn this book I didn't like it at first it started really overwhelming because there was a lot of characters it was started with a woman who was looking at her window and watching the her neighbors through their front windows and she was just talking about way too many people at once at the beginning. I almost DNF'd it because I got overwhelmed, but please don't because I promise it narrows in. This book is the ultimate unreliable narrator because this woman keeps talking about how she can't even trust herself because she has, I think it's a drinking problem or maybe it's a pill problem, um, but she's always using substances. So she's talking about like, I can't even trust myself. Do I believe what I really just saw? Like you just can't even trust the narrator of the story and that is one of my favorite tropes in a thriller is an unreliable narrator and the woman in the window does it so well this book has also been turned into a movie and there's a spin-off tv show i didn't like the movie but i thought the tv show was pretty good it's called like the woman in the house across the street from the woman in the window or something it's like a super ridiculously long title but i thought the show was pretty good the movie however didn't love the book phenomenal. Another favorite thriller of mine that I don't see anybody talking about is In a Cottage in a Wood and that's by Cass Green and this is set in London I believe somewhere over there. Is that the UK? I always want to say the UK. Can you tell I don't do well with geography? Anyways this book opens with a bang. It's about a woman who comes across another woman who is jumping off a bridge to commit suicide. So super heavy beginning, trigger warning right there, like very heavy, heavy, heavy beginning. But the woman that came across the woman that was jumping off the bridge takes over her cottage and ends up moving there. And again, it's a super remote cottage. Of course, of course it is. It's a thriller. Why does nobody like have neighbors in thrillers? But anyways, the woman that committed suicide actually leaves her cottage to the woman that found her, which is already really weird. Like, why are you leaving your cottage to a stranger? A little bit suspicious, but she takes over the cottage and she goes and her only neighbors are like super far away. They're a little bit weird. They're not super trustworthy. Weird things keep happening. There's like dead animals that are put on her doorstep, like creepy, weird, gross things keep happening. And it's just like, oh, it's just one of those books that you're like, ooh, I feel weird. Like weird things are happening. I don't feel good about this. But I literally have not seen anybody else talk about this thriller and I think it was really really good so I would recommend looking into that one. I picked it up randomly at the library just because the cover looked good to me and it was definitely a win. I of course have to talk about The Silent Patient. This book is another one where if you haven't heard about it I am so very surprised. This is about Alicia Ber Ber Bernson. I never knew how to say her last name. I probably never will. It's about Alicia and she kills her husband and she's put away for killing her husband and after she is accused of his murder, convicted of his murder, I guess, she does not say one word. She is completely silent. And there's Theo, who is a criminal psychotherapist, and he is on Alicia's case. So he's trying to get her to talk. He's trying to get her to give hints, give clues, give insights. Like he's trying to work with her and she is like having none of it. She refuses to say anything to anybody. Her silence is the loudest thing ever. Like it is so creepy and also like Theo is kind of weird his co-workers are kind of weird everything's just a little bit off just enough that you're like 
ooh, I literally don't trust one person in this entire book. The plot twist in this book had me shook. I really love this. Again, this is one of the very first thrillers I read, so I think I rated it a little bit higher than I likely would now, but I did give this five stars. Like this is one of my favorite thrillers and I think of it to this day with really fond memories and I would recommend this book to anybody looking to get into thrillers or if you haven't read it yet and you are a thriller reader, definitely pick this one up. I think you'll enjoy it. Last but definitely not least, I want to recommend The Last Word and this book has been pretty popular on Book Talk and BookTube lately. This is about a woman who is staying in a remote house. She's house sitting. Another remote house. Imagine that. But she's off the coast of Washington, which already hits a little bit close to home because I'm from Washington. So I was reading this and I was like, ooh, that's a little bit too close for comfort for me. But she's house sitting by herself, her and her dog in this house off like this beachy coast of Washington. And it's super stormy, super gloomy. The weather is just terrible. She has a old man neighbor who lives just far enough that she can see him with her telescope, binoculars telescope it's a telescope they look at each other through their telescopes and they like communicate through notes and they play hangman and she has this connection with this old man who is her neighbor but he lives decently far away aside from him though completely remote where she's staying anyways this man recommends that she reads this novel that is like one of those cheap novels off amazon like i'm imagining those books you pick up at like a drugstore or walmart and they're just kind of cheesy not well known like not the best written type of books. But she reads this book, she doesn't enjoy it, she says it's terrible, and she goes and she gives it a one-star review on Amazon. The author writes back to her almost immediately and he's like, you have no idea how much work I put into this book, like you giving me a one-star review is going to dissuade people from my work, like you're harming my career, please take your review down. And she's like, respectfully, no, like I hated your book, I'm not taking it down. And he basically comes back, back and forth, they go back and he ends up saying like, take your review down or you're gonna regret it. She essentially is like, yeah, screw you. This was a one-star book. I'm not taking my review down. I stand by it. Well, this author literally comes for her. He is literally unhinged and comes after this woman for giving him a one-star review on his book. So if you're a reader and you're anything like me and you feel bad about giving books anything less than three stars on Goodreads, this book will absolutely traumatize you. I just gave a one star to a book and I haven't stopped thinking about it since because I am petrified after reading the last word. So this is definitely a thriller for my book girlies because that'll get to you. That like is twisted. That's creepy. But those are all the thrillers that I want to recommend for you today. I have a lot of thrillers upcoming on my TBR so I will probably be filming an updated thriller recommendations list relatively shortly because I feel like we're entering the fall season and that's the best time of year for thrillers in my opinion. The fall and winter just when it's dark and kind of dreary outside it's always always thriller weather. Question of the video, leave a comment down below telling me your all-time favorite thriller. Like I said, that's all I have for you today. I hope you got some new thriller recommendations from this video to add to your own TBR. Thank you as always for hanging out with me. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and I will catch you in the next one. Bye book besties. Happy thriller reading. Don't get spooked.